Well, we're going to jump right into the Word of God on this evening. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 18, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. We're going to be looking at verses 21 and 22. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Listen to what the word of God says. It says, then, P then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? But Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven Thus is the reading of God's holy word. It is already blessed. Our lesson this evening is entitled Forgiving and Forgetting. Forgiving and Forgetting. Forgiving and Forgetting. I know a lot of people who hold grudges. And many times when you hold grudges, you really are cutting your own blessings off. So many scriptures in the Bible that talks about forgiving. This is one of the principles that me and First Lady Sabrina came into covenant with. It was the 70 times 7. 70 times 7. We can anticipate misunderstandings, uh, hurting one another, disappointing one another. So as a child of God, we must learn and understand the principle of forgiving and even asking for forgiveness. But the question this evening is, can a believer have the love of God in their hearts and refuse to offer forgiveness at the same time? You see, as born-again believers, we are called to be forgiving in nature, and we must always be willing to let bygones be bygones. As a matter of fact, according to the Baptist Church Covenant, if anyone's familiar with it, we have promised to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. Yes, our faith teaches us to forgive others as we would like to be forgiven. Now, I know it's not always easy to forgive, but if you think forgiving is difficult, then forgetting is even more difficult. And our desire should be to grow in our faith in such a way that we can both forgive and forget. Just as Christ has forgiven our trespasses and he forgets them forever. The Bible says that God throws them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to rise up against us anymore. We're talking about forgiving and forgetting. Somebody just type forgive and forget. According to our text, this evening, we see the Lord Jesus Christ as he gives an age-old lesson about the nature of forgiveness. And the question was asked of the master was, how many times should a brother be forgiven? Okay, for offenses. Well, the number seven was selected by Peter as he attempted to appear spiritual. Since the number seven was a very significant number, it's the number of completion. But Jesus replied, not seven times, but seven times 70. Mm. In other words, 490 times in one day. Well, I need to let you know the significance in Christ's response was really not in the number seven it wasn't even in the number 490, but the significance is in the infinite number of the response. And to suggest that any person could offend us 490 times a day is to suggest that we should always be willing and ready to forgive those who 
offend us. So the number itself is not the main focus. And it doesn't imply that if a person makes the 491st offense that we now are excused to not forgive them forever. No, no. Christ illustrates this point. If you keep reading the text by telling a parable of a servant who owed a great amount of debt and he was forgiven by his master. But he would not grant the same mercy to someone who only owed him a small amount of debt. So you see, our obligation as believers is to show forgiveness to others just as Christ has shown forgiveness to us. We're talking about forgiving and forgetting. So, so what are what are some qualities of forgiveness? Well, according to the Webster Dictionary, forgiveness is the remission of a penalty due for an offense. Now, forgiveness is not an endorsement for wrongdoing. And it's really not a vote for confidence for breaking God's law. No, forgiveness is really just setting aside of any penalty that is due because of a wrongful or sinful act against us. Because when people offend us, our range of responses can, can go from mere shunning the people to even physical harming them. And, and, and somewhere in between, the object of our anger receives multiple impressions of negative comments and responses in our subconscious mind. And without forgiveness, these responses against these offenders will continue. It'll just go on and on and on. And the devil knows how to mess with our minds. He'll, he'll play that same negative state. I dare she said that about me. What? Ooh, and the devil said, what you going to do? You going to let her get away with that? You going to let him get away with that? You better give her or him a piece of your mind and, and you will not rest. But guess what? If you say, Lord, I forgive him. I release him in the name of Jesus. When you say Jesus, guess what? It's broken. And, and that's part of spiritual warfare. But if you don't do it immediately, and you allow it to replay over in your mind. See, without forgiveness, the next step is say, I'm not even going to talk to them. I'm going to refuse to speak to those who hurt me. But without forgiveness, we become bitter. And, and we become upset with those who have abused us or used us. But, but forgiveness, on the other hand, it requires that the penalty that would ordinarily be exacted against those who have hurt us be set aside and not carried through. In other words, the devil comes and says, what you going to do? You just tell the devil, nothing. I'm going to release it. I'm going to turn it over to the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back. And I'm going to let God fight my battles. Don't you know God already promised in his word that vengeance belongs to him? That he will repay? You see, when we forgive, we undertake no acts of retaliation. When, when we truly forgive, we refuse to respond in hatred or anger. We, we take back our emotional responses. And for the most part, once we have forgiven an act, we just, we just set it aside. Amen? And we give it over to God. And the main reason why we forgive my brothers and sisters is because we ourselves have been forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We're, we're talking about forgiving and forgetting. Somebody just type forgive and forget. Now, one of the underlying factors relating to true forgiveness is our understanding that no one, not even our enemies, consciously does things in which they believe is truly wrong. Yes, 
The human mind is so constructed that a person must convince himself or herself that their action is right or justified before they act. In other words, our, our enemies believe that whatever they did to us was right or justified in some kind of way. Therefore, their feelings are not always correct, but that's where compassion has to come in to understand the situation from the point of view of our opposition. So as believers, we must strive to exhibit virtue in every aspect of our lives and we pray that God will open up the eyes of our enemies or, or even our family members just to see the error of their ways. And whenever we respond, to our enemies, our, our family, or even our position in love, what we do, we facilitate the action of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We allow the Holy Spirit to just come in and take over the situation. But when we respond in hate, our enemies are now controlled by the, the devil who is the main enemy. Y'all remember what the Apostle Paul said? He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, people are not your enemies. The devil is using them. There's an enemy behind the people that he's using. So therefore, we must get to the root of the problem and understand spiritual warfare. If not, you'll find yourself fighting your spouse. You'll find yourself at odds with your son, your daughter, your daughter-in-law, your mother-in-law. And you'll find yourself not speaking to them for years because something they did. But when you're spiritual, you'll understand it wasn't them. It was a spirit, especially if they're not saved or they're still carnal or they're still babes in Christ. Amen. We must learn how to respond like Christ. Amen. For example, when Christ hung up on the cross, those who made fun of him, they jeered him. And even those who nailed him to the cross, they thought they were right. Even the soldiers who, who saw him as a public menace, they thought they were right. Even the crowds of skeptics that followed him and saw him do great miracles, they said he was able to heal others and perform mighty acts, but he can't save himself. And even the unrepentant thief on the cross, saw him as just another lawbreaker, just like himself, who was claiming to have supernatural powers. But, but Jesus, understanding their feelings and the root cause of their actions, he chose not to hate them nor retaliate. But instead, he uttered the words to his father that showed compassion to them by saying, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And just like our Savior, we too should strive to be forgiving. And when people make fun of our failures, we too should say, Father, forgive them. When people dig ditches for us, Father, forgive them. When people stab us in the back, Father, forgive them. When people make our ways difficult and tough, Father, forgive them. When we have a boss that, that doesn't like us or that's, that's jealous of our gift or think that we're trying to, to take control of the company, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We're talking about forgiving and forgetting. We're here. We see and understand that forgiving is an integral part of living this Christian life, but also is forgetting. 
But, but the question is, is it really possible to forgive and to forget? In other words, does forgiveness require us to blot out of our memory any record of offenses made against us? Now, don't get me wrong. We, we're not called upon to forget the actual deeds that were committed against us. But we are called upon to forget about the pain and the, and the agony that was associated with those deeds. You see, to forget is to close the womb and to allow God to heal it. And those who truly forget and allow God to heal you, they're no longer angry every time they think about the situation. Yes, those who forget, when they see the people that did them wrong, they have no desire for vengeance. They have dismissed the offense as a learning experience and, and close it away in the closet of their past. Paul put it this way. He said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. And I press toward the mark for the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So therefore, sometimes we just have to leave the past in the past. Amen. Everything that happens in our life, lives is, is either a, a lesson or it's a blessing. So it's a good thing to be able to forgive and to forget because all of us have had somebody in our lives that did us something. Amen? That has harmed us, that has offended us in some form or fashion. And if you don't learn how to let it go, it will hinder your spiritual progress, your walk with Christ, even your blessings from on high. Mm. Now, I need to let somebody know that the Lord is still in the business of forgiving and forgetting. And he's called us to be just like him. Sometimes we say, that, well, that's God, that's Jesus. I'm only human. No, God has told us that if we abide in him and his word abide in us, we can ask what we will and it shall be done. In other words, whenever you feel like you can't do something that's written in the word of God, all you have to do is pray and say, God, help me. Help me through this situation. Help me to forgive this person. Who I have all against. And guess what? He will help you. He will strengthen you. And he will keep you. Don't you know the word of God says. If any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold all things have become new. And just like your sins and my sins have been washed away by the blood of the Lamb. We can forgive because there's power in the blood. But guess what? We can forget because there's power in the blood. And just like Christ has forgiven us. We can forgive one another. But you first must have that desire. God, help me. Give me a forgiving spirit. Give me a loving. God, I want to love like you. I want to walk like you, Jesus. I want to talk like you, Jesus. And when we begin to forget those things and reach for those things, God says, I got your back. I will handle your enemies. I will handle your oppressors. I will handle your accusers. He looked at the woman caught in the act of adultery. And he asked her a question. Woman, where art thou accusers? The woman said, there are none, Lord. They're gone. He says, neither do I accuse you. Go thy way. 
and sin no more. My brothers and sisters, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're a child of God, you better not tell me that you cannot forgive and forget. Well, y'all, my time is up, y'all, and I thank God for yours. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise. If you receive this word on this evening, say, I receive it. Amen. Oh, yeah, somebody going to cross our path every time. Yeah, the devil come, sometimes set us up. So we have to be willing to forgive. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap.